So I expressed some worries about uh, me having this talk so late in the day and staying sober. And uh, I'm happy to announce that I almost made it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm Marcus, and you might know me from Perl projects like Catalyst, Malicious, Mojo Mojo. I use this. Uh, I work for Nordoker, a company based here in Oslo, actually in this, this uh, venue that we are right now. Uh, so we are a product and uh, development, uh, product development and consulting company. We're doing less consulting than we used to, but uh, we're still available for projects that are interesting to us. Uh, but mainly we're focusing on our two products, Rank.no and the Output Company. Uh, but uh, I'm here to talk about uh, Convos, uh, HTML5 async Node.js-like application in Perl. And what does that, what's that, that mean? Is it like, what is async? I think you all know a little bit more about that. What the HTML5 features. I'm gonna talk a little bit about how we're doing things like Node and uh, why we are here, why fire trucks are red. And, uh, but first, so when I tell people I made an IRC client, people are going, Mirk, really? Didn't that die in the 90s? And yes, luckily, you seldom hear ASL anymore, and uh, still the internet relay chat network thrives. Uh, IRC is the chat network for people who run the internet. That was a quote I saw on Twitter earlier that I really enjoyed. Uh, and it's uh, very actively used in open source still. So most open source projects have an IRC channel. Of course, there's IRC Perl org, where Mojo's project lives. In the, Dash in the hash mojo. There's also ircfreenode.org that has channels for almost every project under the sun. Uh, and uh, Wikipedia is also con uh, coordinated over IRC. Most Wikipedia contributors follow an IRC channel of posts and validate and check how things are working. Uh, so thanks to Screen and IRC2 and later IRC, this was how I was online on IRC pretty much 24-7 from 1993 to 2010. But a few things started to bother me. Uh, for one, I couldn't get any desktop notification, and as I started, my mobile phone started to get much smarter, I didn't have a good mobile client for accessing IRC. So uh, that's what, what uh, I was talking to Jan Henning, my friend over there, and he had the same kind of problems. Uh, so we wanted the same thing, and we started hacking together and we called named it Verk as a tribute to, to Merk, and uh, later renamed it to Convos. Uh, but before I delve into tech, let's go through some of the end results. Uh, the project lives at github.com slash nordic slash Convos. It's open sourced, of course, artistic license like Perl. Uh, and you can go there and follow installations. We have a one line installation. And once you follow that, you should be able to see this. This is the first registration screen. Uh, you fill out a username, an email address, and set the password. Uh, and then you, you get to the next step where you choose which network to connect to. By default, you will go to our development channel, Convos. Uh, and you choose the nick that you enter. Once you've done that, uh, we can also uh, add your own network. For instance, if you have a work IRC channel, you can set up anything. Note that if you use TLS, you must install the optional module that the malicious depends on uh, for that to work. Uh, and then you, pre you press the connect button uh, and you get to this basic layout. Uh, oops, that's one slide too, too far. Conversations are always on the top here. So you, they will always be list, uh, ordered by the last visited. And uh, if you, cha you change the channel, it will always keep the ones that you have your history to the, to the left. Uh, if there's more, more here than, than you, you have room for, it will create a drop down at the end. And all connections are available from the main convos bot on the left side. Uh, yeah, so when you enter a channel, it will look up your avatars based on your IRC host mask to the avatar, and it will fall back to an auto-generated uh, uh, standard avatar if it can, like GitHub does for commits. You've probably seen this if you don't have a gravatar and you use GitHub, you will get this uh, standard thing. You can see how it looks here. 
It's automatically scaling the user interface using CSS media queries. So it will work on any mobile device or any tablet, depending on the, the independent of the width of your screen. And works great on iPhones and Android phones, device, or Android devices, rather. Uh, we're also using HTML5 desktop notifications. So this is a standard, and it's uh, implemented differently on various OSs. Uh, on OS 10, it has a native integration, and it, it means that if you get a notification while you have uh, Virk open in any tab on your browser, it will show a system level notification to tell you what's going on. Uh, we're really hoping that iOS and Android will expand support for this standard as well, so that we can start sending notifications, system level notifications from uh, Chrome on Android devices and, and the mobile Safari. Yeah, so that's the app itself. Uh, there's also a live demo that you can test out yourself at the demo.convos.by. There's also link, it's also linked from the GitHub and the README. Uh, so why did we choose Mojo to implement this? Of course, we are both quite familiar with Mojo and uh, uh, we really like Mojo Delay, which makes it possible for us to do a mix of, of uh, like interdependent uh, operations and asynchronous parallel requests. Uh, and the other hand, also uses async extensively for his work uh, and, and does async router control. Uh, I think he has a CPAN module to demonstrate that, actually. App Screenorama, is that right, Henning? So if you're interested in, in that kind of work, you can check out that module. Uh, yeah, so I actually originally wrote this talk for, for uh, FOSTEM, and uh, you guys already know quite a lot about async given all the other talks today. But uh, there are many meanings. I think Wikipedia covers it pretty well. You know, I've been using Glitter just for you, uh, uh, Tempur, in this presentation. Uh, asynchronous events are those occurring independently of the main program flow. Asynchronous actions are actions executed in a non-blocking scheme, allowing the main program to continue, flow to continue processing, just like we saw in the previous demo as well. Uh, so we can basically continue to serve HTTP responses while we're also waiting for RC messages to come down, and we can have the WebSocket-based polling that we're doing uh, using the IOL loop. Uh, yeah. So th this is, of course, the main uh, part of the malicious asynchronous support. It uh, plays well with others. So uh, one of the things that I really recommend if you're going to use Convos is to install uh, EV because that will speed up things a lot. If you're using the pure Perl Mojo loop, it's, it's going to consume a lot of CPU as you keep adding users. But the C-based libEV may speed it up uh, tremendously. And then you get C-level performance similar to Node.js and, and libUV. Of course, the Mojo loop supports timers, recurring the timers, servers, and ticks. And it's the bottom layer of the Mojo stack. Uh, yeah. So we had to do quite a bit of jack shaving to uh, create Convos. Uh, so some new modules came out of that. Uh, we, just, we just released the Redux to Rome on the CPAN, so they wouldn't have to be shaved again. Uh, the first thing that we had to make was Mojo Redis. Uh, it's actually based on Mojo X Redis, an old hidden module, which we restored and cleaned up for our purposes. Uh, so this is the synopsis from the pod documentation. It can take a URL config or, or an AMDA optional user password. All commands are, are mapped, so if you're, not, but if you're not updated with the latest version, you can also just use exec to access uh, new features in Redis. Uh, yeah, and why did we choose Redis? It's a very fast, schema-less val key value store with some interesting operations. Especially the publish subscribe part was very interesting to us. That means that we can set up uh, a WebSocket part and then just listen for events to come into the, to the Redis server. It also provides sorted sets, which means you can uh, like store timed events or whatever in a set that's sorted by a given key in, in the uh, value or a score. Uh, and it's single-threaded, which gives us at atomic operations. So the main downside for us that we see right now is that it's memory backed. So that means that you have a limited ma maximum size of, of uh, uh, storage there. 
Um, they're actually already logging out and cleaning that out so that the max size stays within a certain footprint. We also made Mojo IRC, uh, which we, we took some of the older CPAN modules from IRC, IRC utils, parse IRC, and malicious, and combined them all together into this asynchronous uh, IRC driver. And the way it works is like you just set it up with a, a IRC NIC and the user and the server that you want to connect to, and then you get the standard Mojo EU loop events like on IRC join or on IRC message and so on and so, on and so forth. Uh, we're using this inside our core component, but you can easily use this to write like an IRC bot or a one-off script of some sort to process the IRC things. Uh, and the final module that we shaved out of, of Convos is malicious plugin asset pack, which uh, Jan Henning was covering earlier today in his talk. We just basically needed an asset pipeline and, and uh, Conveniently, Jan Henning had one, so uh, yeah. I'm not going to go into detail here, but uh, this is how, 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 you, how you set it up. And uh, if you were asleep during the earlier talk, uh, yeah. So, web sockets, that's a, uh, oops. Uh, Moilicious was, of course, very early on implementing web sockets, and, and Sebastian followed up with all of the RFCs uh, throughout the development. Uh, and as he mentioned in his, talk, uh, in his talk in the morning, it now even supports per message deflate, which can give a tremendous boost for things like uh, um, messages if you're using Chrome. They, of course, IRC messages compress really well. Uh, yeah, so the bit, why is it back? Oh, it's magic. Uh, no. Boom. <laughs> That's the best transition today, I think. So I guess you're all, you're all sold out now. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, the way you use WebSockets from Malicious, it's really, really easy. You just set up a special WebSocket method with a, a endpoint, like dash messages. And then you start to set, uh, waiting for messages and push them out on the, on the web socket. Uh, all of the problems we have uh, is, of course, non-blocking order dependency. Uh, and this provide, Redis provides a lot of small, fast operations. We often need to run them in a certain sequence or in like, one thing in, par for, in, for in uh, parallel uh, and another one in sequence afterwards. Uh, of course, if you've seen Node.js, this often ends up in, in callback hell unless you use one of the optional modules. Uh, so we've been using Moyo IO loop delay, which was new in malicious four, I believe, three? Four, yeah. Uh, so we've been covering that a little bit earlier today, but uh, to synchronize a, a, an event, this is taken for, again from the synopsis of the malicious core documentation. You can set up a delay and then have one finish event, and uh, then you just set, set up a bunch of, of uh, parallel things to run and wait for them all to finish. And then it will count down and uh, eventually uh, say boom. Uh, for to give a more concrete example of how we re we've been using it, we typically do like uh, Redis get and Redis get this and get and that, and then we process it in the next level. Uh, yeah. In the project, we've also borrowed a lot of culture from, from Mojo. So we're trying to run the whole project on, on uh, GitHub using pull requests and the issue tracker there and the, the whole flow. We're using the same product IDRC as, as the Moilicious project I use. Uh, and we've been uh, looking, at, it's now actually enforced by hooks because me and, me and Jan and he had some indifferences with both code style and now we're just enforcing it to, uh, on the entire project, which is a really good way to scale your development. Uh, and it has a solid test, so it's, but we're still missing the Futurama quotes. We're hoping to implement that in a future version. Uh, yeah, so my previous open source application, Mojo Mojo, it had a dependency chain of 417 CPAN modules, and it made it kind of hard to install. <laughs> so when we started working on Convos, we had that in mind, and it has 
nine, a dependency graph of nine modules, including malicious, which makes it a lot easier. And uh, we also use Miyagawa's uh, module uh, carton, which is really great for, for simplifying and tracking the, the dependency graphs. Uh, it takes a snapshot of all the versions that you're using so that when you're re reinstalling, you can actually get the same versions, and it even can bundle all your dependencies into the tarball so that you don't have you to rely on CPAM being available at all. You can install it offline or whatever and get all of your dependencies installed into a local directory. This is very inspired by Ruby's bundler, which lets you do like bundle exec, and Carton has the same concept where you do Carton exec, and it sets up the Perl environment with exactly the same modules as the developers use. Uh, so the way that works is you create a CPAM file, which is like make file PL for apps instead of for uh, CPAM modules, and it just lists dependencies and the versions that you depend on. And it allows you to lock on a specific version so that even if CPAM releases new, new versions, it will stay on that one. And then, yeah, you just run the server with the carton dependencies. Uh, in addition, we've also set up Docker trusted builds for, for Carton so that uh, you can get, we have a, a, a Docker image, nordocker slash, uh, dash convos, and you can just do Docker pull uh, of that, that image and fire up a, a, a convos instance directly. It even includes the Redis server that you need. So if you have a Docker infrastructure set up, you could, should look into that. It makes things really easy if you want to test out uh, Soft server software, and there are a lot of other nice projects that are already in Docker as well, like Graphite or Logstash. And I really recommend looking into that. I'll be talking about that also in my Lightning talk in a minute. Uh, yeah. In addition, you can use it on, on passes like uh, Heroku or uh, .cloud. Heroku ha currently has WebSocket support in beta, so you have to go in and turn that on if you want to deploy to Heroku, but then that means you can just git push to your application to, uh, to install it uh, and update it. And this works with Miyagawa's uh, uh, Perl build pack. Yeah. So when we built the web front end, we used, of course, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Uh, we started using a JS MVC and uh, rendered templates in JavaScript on the client side. Uh, but we found that it was really complex and uh, uh, hard to maintain over, uh, after a while, so uh, in the end we just tore the whole thing out and simplified it by generating all the templates on the, on the, on the uh, server side and sent HTML5 over the wire using, instead of not Ajax, but uh, yeah, it, it, asynchronous JavaScript and HTML. Uh, and we're using HTML5 push state to make the page loads go away and then still fall back to, to full scale page loads. Uh, this degrades gracefully and super is supported by all modern browsers and we implemented that using PageAx, which is a jQuery module made by GitHub. If you've been using the GitHub file browser to look into which files and, and browse it on, that's also using the PageAx, PageAx CPAM module, uh, JavaScript module, sorry. Uh, so the way it works is it's, you set up uh, on, on a bunch of timers on these selectors here. If you have uh, you're going to load that fragment into that div, right? So instead of serving a whole page, it will just load and, and fill a div automatically when you click a link. Uh, and if the JavaScript thing is disabled, then, or it, then it will fall back to just loading the full page and doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, so you can hook it up using different reload messages and updating all the state once you're done. So, after we have that working now, but we actually is again considering yet another re rewrite of the JavaScript frontend. We've been looking on, at React.js, uh, a component-based JavaScript framework from, from uh, uh, Facebook, and we really like it. It allows you to split up the complicated user interfaces into simple components and then push the state down the stack. So you just have one safe place where you update the stack, and uh, then you maintain it there. Uh, and again, with the CSS, we started with Bootstrap, and we eventually tore it out and uh, rewrote it with a really simple custom layout. Uh, so the idea is to keep it as simple and uh, try to keep it rating until you get it right. And uh, we are trying to have strong opinions, but hold them lightly. So we are willing to change our mind if we see that uh, what we thought was the right solution. 
six months ago won't work. Yeah. So while developing this, this thing, we met a few problems, especially with using the web uh, with using web sockets. The first problem that we met, of course, is the IRC stops working whenever I move around. If I close my laptop or if I go to a different network, it stops working. Uh, Browser-based web sockets do not, by default, reconnect. So uh, we found a module called VS Reconnecting, which will look for disconnects and just like hook up the web socket again so that it works. So that kind of thing is important to remember when you're doing web socket based. You actually have to like handle it yourself because browsers won't do it for you. So even after we did that, we got like problems with IRC stopping working anyways. Connections were timing out, even though we were using the WebSocket ping frames, which uh, uh, just just part out of the box. Uh, turns out that Chrome doesn't really use those ping frames. Uh, and so in the end, we really had to implement uh, ping over standard frames, because uh, um, that's the only way we could get it to keep from timing out. So we're sending like a textual ping inside the WebSocket message. Uh, that's something to look out for if you're implementing WebSockets and you have problems with timeouts. Of course, we also had Unicode problems. So RC doesn't really have a charter, standard uh, charter encoding. You can use whatever, Latin one or what you like in the client. Uh, so we had to use uh, Unicode UTF-8 which is a model Chanston made, and that lets us easily fall back to Latin 1 processing if Unicode, if, if you're not uh, serving valid Unicode. Uh, and that solved that problem. The next thing that we met was uh, problems with our schemaless design. Okay, of course, it's great to have like uh, Mango, MongoDB or Redis where you don't have to design your schemas and you can just push data and it starts it's created for you. Uh, but uh, once you try to change it, we really need some way of, of dealing with that. Uh, so we built Convos Upgrader. It runs all of your migrations in order. So every time you change your schema, we have to update all our data to match the new schema. Uh, it's kind of similar to, to uh, uh, migrations in, in other, other frameworks. Uh, we just set up a bunch of, of jobs and we define which order to run them. Uh, yeah, so that's the state we have now. We are, we are, we, I just uh, released a new version today, and we have a minimum viable product. I'm using this as my full-time RC client. Uh, we still have a lot of plans for things that we want to have in, in, in Convos. The first thing that I really want is to be able to search the data that we're now outputting into logs. So we're going to do a pluggable search so that if you have Elasticsearch installed in your machine, we will just use it and start index your, indexing your data. But the app will work without it, so you don't need to have that, and it'll probably support a couple of search backends. I'm really interested in talking about malicious uh, plugin search once that has a little few more, more engines, because that could be a really good way for us to solve that problem. Uh, we also want more IRC admin features. We've been really focused on chat so far, and not, not so much like kicking people or banning people or, or stuff like that. Even, I'm actually even ignoring most like joins and quits and stuff. I'm very, very, very focused on conversations at the moment, as the name implies. Uh, but we probably need to round that out and handle being kicked from channels better and, and things like that, and being able to do IRC op features eventually as well. We really want uh, native uh, mobile clients. IRC Cloud recently open sourced their iOS and Android clients. So we're planning on implementing a, a, a compatible API so that we can uh, just use their clients rather than implementing our own. Uh, we also want a plugin infrastructure so that we can add more functionality to our bot. And we're really looking forward to people writing plugins and extending Convos as soon as that's in place. That's probably one of the first things that's, that's landing in the 0.6 release, I guess. Uh, we also plan to do pluggable auth so that you can use uh, LDAP for your enterprise or if you have a SQL database with your users, you can authenticate it against that. And then we're probably also going to support uh, my module, my malicious plugin auth too, so that you can auth, uh, auth convos against your GitHub uh, gr uh, organization account or like against your uh, Google group, Google uh, app domain. Uh, 
Uh, something that we already have some progress on is the distributed IRC avatars so that the, the, those pictures that you see that you can actually set a specific picture in, in our system and get other Convos clients to understand that. Uh, and Jeleni already has done some significant work in that, work in that direction. Uh, we're also interested in, in your features and uh, we're really very welcome to pull requests on, on uh, GitHub. If you want to do hack on something, just fork it and, and send us a pull request and we'll definitely be interested in discussing it. Uh, yeah. So 0 0.5 was released today. You can find it, uh, it's a, the Docker index has been updated. You can install it using our one line script on GitHub or you can uh, get it from CPAN as well. Uh, so are there any questions? <laughs>